friends and family. Hello, 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 and welcome to another reading vlog. So I'm hoping to finish off the month of April with this one. Uh, so I've already picked some books. They're already on the schedule. Um, there's some ones on my TBR that I'd put that still haven't come out. I'm hoping they can be released right before I finish this vlog. That one is, I think it was Krista Comes Out of a Shell, something like that. The library hasn't got it in yet. They were meant to get it in. This might be the first uh, TBR that I don't actually fulfill, but I'm trying to get all the others read. So I have already read a book and it's an arc from NetGalley because I also want to read those as quickly as possible and keep my rating up. And that is The Positions of Spoons. So I liked this author's writing style. I read their novel, August Blue, and I didn't love that the fact the book was pretty much just vibes, the, the plot was a bit weird and odd, but the writing style I really enjoyed. So when I saw this on NetGalley, I applied for it because it was a bunch of short essays. And I feel like sometimes with certain authors whose style I like, but perhaps I don't like the way they craft characters or their plot and things, this is a great way to read them because I'm getting their writing style in like little morsel bite-sized pieces. So this one was mostly about, I would say, female <laughs> artists, um, especially ones that meet tragic demises, violent ends. There was a lot about women like that, like say Sylvia Plath, and Grace Kelly of that vein. So a lot of um, essays on those women. There was also my particular ones, the ones that I, the ones that I actually really enjoyed the most were about inanimate objects. I felt like they were really whimsical and they were just really interesting. And I just love the way she wrote about them. For instance, she writes about lemons, she writes about shoes, and I enjoyed those ones the most out of all of the essays. And I've given it a four stars. It was enjoyable. I like the writing. I felt obviously when you've got a book that's full, a collection, there are going to be ones that you don't like in there. For me, for instance, I did not enjoy the one about Alice and the rabbit. I just thought it was weird and odd and I didn't get it. But overall, most of them are really wonderful. And I learned some things. There were some facts in there, you know, some bits of history that I didn't know, but I liked her observations and the conversations she was having, having about the things that she was talking about. And there was this little bit about the spoons in there that if you were to measure the love a mother has for her children in spoons, there wouldn't be enough copper spoons in the world to accomplish it. And that was very sweet. So there were, it was lovely and I would read more from this author, especially in terms of short works of short fiction or essays in this case, because like I said, the writing is very beautiful. Oh, Bubba. Hey. Sweetie. Hey. So I am going to the library today. Don't, don't climb the curtains, Bubby. I can't get you down right now. Cats are chaos. Cats are chaos. <gasps> Bluebell. RAP my curtains, guys. My very expensive. Why are curtains so expensive, by the way? Just astronomically expensive. Uh, I'm going to the library to pick up some books. One of those is Pretty Boys Are Poisonous, which is a book of poetry by Megan Fox. I'm going in with like zero expectations, but I'm reading that. I am also currently reading an arc from NetGalley and it is called Psychedelics and the Soul, a Mythic Guide to Psychedelic Healing, Depth Psychology and Cultural Repair. And besides those two, I've got two more books that were on my TBR to be read this month. So I'm going to try and slot them in too. And that's Butcher and Blackbird, which is the dark romance about two serial killers and Glimmer of the Other, which is another urban fantasy paranormal book. So that's pretty much what I'm feeling for wrapping up the end of April with but I'll see you guys once I've read some more books. Okay, so I just got back from the library. I've already read one of the books. It is Pretty Boys Are Poisonous by Megan Fox. I'm going to start by reading her introduction because can relate, can relate. And I'll show you some of the beautiful illustrations that are in this book while I'm reading this out loud. Dear reader, all of my healers tell me that my throat chakra is blocked. In case you aren't familiar, the throat chakra is the energy center that is related to communication. Usually when someone's throat chakra is closed, it's because they are not able to identify their feelings and articulate them in a way that is aligned with their emotions and intentions. I don't have this problem. My problem is that I deeply identify my feelings and have multitudinous ways of articulating them, but I am not able to express them because when I do, it has made the men who have loved me feel intimidated inadequate and insecure. And so I have spent all of my life making myself small so that others can feel confident. I have a savior martyr complex. 
I've always believed I am meant to be a sacrificial lamb, a ransom for the soul of whichever beautiful, broken, self-absorbed idiot is currently hunting me down and draining me of my life force. I am at once jaded and naive. A hopelessly romantic open wound of a human with a blisteringly sardonic sense of expression that I keep mostly repressed except for the rare rare carpet red carpet moments or interviews when these observations kamikaze themselves from my mouth because I can't bear the weight of the artifice anymore. But then one day it happened. One of said idiots finally broke me and from me poured these poems featuring previously unspoken feelings of isolation, torment, self-harm, desperation, longing, restlessness, rage, and general anguish. These are the experiences of many of us that I now give voice to in these poems. This book is for anyone who has given much more than they received, or for anyone who struggles to believe they deserve to be heard. This book is also for me, because fuck, I deserve better. Love, Megan. So basically, this is a book of poetry, <laughs> a big to the, I guess, abusive men that she loved that were in her life that harmed her. I'd say the poems themselves are sort of steeped in fairy tales, mythology, and religious allegory. So that's the kind of tones they all have. I enjoy them. Are these brilliant? No. Do they remind me of the Tumblr poems from days of yore? Yes, they do. They have a rupee cowness to them. But my God, they're catchy. My God, they're punchy. And they're relatable. Some of them were humorous. I actually lolled at some. <laughs> it was quite funny. So she decides to put the title of the poem actually underneath the poem. And I think that that actually is done to great effect in this book. It really works to actually to read the title after you've read the poem to give it sort of its context post reading it. So this one made me lol. Your love leaves bloodstains on my bed sheets. The title of this is it's giving Patrick Bateman. <laughs> laugh like it's a lot of millennialness in this and I appreciate it but I'll just read you some of them there are some that I love mostly they are short form poems all of them are just little snippets I, like I said it does remind me of that tumblr sort of pinterest era where they're very pinnable little pieces here we have I'm going to leave the title to the end they say she dwells in the cities of the sea they say she was a banshee a demon hag that she seduces innocent men in their sleep they say she eats babies, but really she was just a woman who refused to get on all fours so an insecure man could feel like a god. The truth about Lilith. So I would say a lot of them are very like pro-feminist. A lot of them are like, mm, I'm going to say uh, man-hating. I'll read one more. This is, you thought that if you stopped watering me, I would die. But you forgot to dig up my roots. And though you tried your best, you weren't able to block me from the light. And while you neglected me, I trusted in the unseen. And now there is a sequoia standing where that naive sapling used to be. I've outgrown you. And no matter how much you cry or beg, I will never be your giving tree. Photosynthesis. So like I said, are they cheesy? Yes. Do I give a fuck? No. Go off queen. That's how I feel. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's just, it's speaking to my inner teenager and it's speaking to the woman in me that's had, that has felt and been through these things with undeserving men to put it mildly I enjoyed it bro I was it, it was made me smile made me laugh made me resonate um so yeah I know that this this book is getting a lot of hate for its I guess simplicity you know they're not literary masterpieces but she's still speaking to a sort of universal experience a very common experience that women have and I find value in that and because it's done in such an easy manner because the the poems aren't incredibly long it's it's easy to read it's readable and you can put it down and also it's even though there are very confronting things written in here so do check the trigger warnings she is talking about abuse and she mentions you know a lot of the issues in the front of her in the introduction but i really liked it so i've given it a five stars to boost up it's it's a rating or good reads because i feel bad that it's being so trash because yeah i'm, I'm like <laughs> Because it's like the same thing with, with books. Sometimes there is a book that it's not written masterfully, but you still really enjoy the story. You still get something from it. And I got something from this. So this is uh, Pretty Boys Are Poisonous by Megan. Megan Fox? Is it Megan? I don't even know how she prefers to pronounce her name. My apologies. All right. So let's look at the other books that I picked up from the library. So we've got Piglet here. 
And then we've got this one called Practice by Rosalind Brown. So a lot of these books, I don't know what they're about. I just grabbed them because I came in. We've got I'm Fucking Amazing on a tub of Vaseline. <laughs> it caught my eye. <laughs> you made me laugh. I'll take you home with me. I'm easy to please that way. And then we've got When Cucumber Lost His Core with a really funny picture of a cucumber and a strawberry. This reminds me of, uh, was it Barry? Ah, woo! From the great movie... Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs too. Fantastic movie. Love that one. So I got this for Kiddo. I hope she loves it. She likes funny stuff. So we'll see if this is funny. But yes, I'll see you next time I read something. Hey, honey. Having fun down there? I love you. Okay, so I read Mouth Stories, which was a collection of very weird, creepy, odd stories. My favourite was about a woman and a, a vet and a werewolf. That was my favourite one. The opening one is about a necrophiliac who falls in love with a vampiric girl who's an ice skater. It's just, look, there was a lot of devouring and being devoured in this. Um, very heavy on the sexual stuff. Very heavy on the really gross stuff. <laughs> so for me, I'm giving it an overall score of 3.75. But yeah, I think f it's not so much the horror elements or the weird sexual stuff that I didn't enjoy. It was the fact that I couldn't understand a lot of the stories. Like they, they were unexplained and I'm not a good, I'm not great with things not being explained, with things being sort of open-ended. I like answers. So I think that's why this wasn't exactly for me. So this was an arc from NetGalley and I love the writing style, but yeah, it was just the ambiguousness of the stories is what sort of I didn't love the most. I'm currently reading Psychedelics of the Soul, which talks about psychedelics like ayahuasca and psilocybin, and also how the journey relates to mythology, to archetypes. So it's a lot about myths, a lot about Jungian concepts, and about the whole experience of the soul and the psyche. And I'm really enjoying it so far. It's really interesting. I also read Butcher and Blackbird. So this is a dark romance about two serial killers who play a game to try and catch other serial killers and kill them first, but sort of create a romance along the way. Um, look, I'm not rating this because dark romance is not for me. And once again, it, this is a very dirty book, not just because of the gore and the violence, but because of the sex. The sex is dirty. <laughs> and normally that would be my thing. But I just didn't connect to these two characters, and so the sex for me, it doesn't matter how well it's written, if I'm not vibing with the relationship and with the characters, it's sort of meaningless for me. It's a bit empty, but I think a lot of people would like it. It's very raunchy. Uh, there was a lot of cussing, though, like a bit too much cussing. I have a potty mouth, but not that much of a potty mouth. So it was it was interesting. It's a lot of body horror, okay? Like they they slice and dice victims, and they're very graphic about the descriptions of that. So if you squeamish, don't just don't. Um, but yeah, with sex wise, like there's double penetration. There's a lot of stuff. So read at your own at your own risk. I can see why it's popular. It's very easy to read. It gets straight into it. It's fast paced. But the characters just felt a bit too silly for me, even though they're serial killers. It was a bit too silly. They were just always calling each other fucker. And I, yeah, it was just wasn't my, my taste. But that was Butcher and Blackbird. Uh, I'm now also going to start Glimmer of the Other. So that's probably going to be the final book for this, along with Psychedelics of the Soul. I'm going on a date today with Mr. Italiano again. So it's the fourth date. I don't know if I like this outfit now. I'm seeing it on camera. It's just a bodysuit with, with jeans. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's maybe too cash. I'm gonna to have to go back to my closet. And it sucks because I've done the makeup for this. Maybe I've got another brown top because my makeup's kind of like brownie gold. I'm gonna to have to go and dress. But yes, I've got a date today. So I'll catch up with you once I've read some more books. That looks delicious. <laughs> okay, so I went on the date and I'm not going to. <laughs> continue to date this person. I think they're lovely and we are compatible in a lot of ways, but after four dates, they still don't know anything about me because they only talk about themselves. And for instance, I went to their house, I bought them their favorite bottle of wine, 
And I said, oh, how did you remember? Because I've asked you questions. I've learned about you and I'm being thoughtful and I want that in return, you know? And it's not like he was only doing a bit of it. He did nothing. I'm not joking when I said he did not ask me a single question about myself. He didn't even say my name, which is a bit odd. And I need someone that shows an interest in me as a human being. So yeah, uh, might stay on friendly terms with them. I would consider being their friend. I'll consider them as a cuddle buddy, you know, but no further than that, just just for hugs and, and little smooches. So yeah, that was, that was, um, that unfortunately is not going to continue on, but I did read Glimmer of the Other World and I've DNF'd it. It's just a case of the writing style is not for me. So it's a paranormal with a lady named Jinx who can tell when people are lying and then one day she discovers the other world, that there are creatures and fae and all sorts of things and that her dog was actually a hellhound all along. But yeah, it's just the writing style wasn't, wasn't getting me and I'm very fussy with my urban fantasies and paranormal. I love Alona Andrews, so that's the kind of style I enjoy. I need it to be a bit more serious, not so like jokey and silly in a way. So I did DNF that book. And I'm just continuing on with Psychedelics of the Soul. It's one of those books I do enjoy it. I like the writing. It's very descriptive. It's very mythical and folklorish. But with those kinds of books, I have to take my time. They're, they're very slow reads for me. So this one's going to take me a little bit to finish. But that's the last book that I've got to finish up. And once I finished it, I'll let you know how I went. So I realized I forgot to tell you about Psychedelics of the Soul. So basically it's a look at journeying with psychedelics, how it affects the psyche and the soul, viewed through the lens of mythology, Jungian psychology and archetypes. It was really interesting. I felt like the portions though spent on discussing the mythology, like the actual story first, went a bit long because obviously then when they're talking about psychedelics and things that you can experience and how it relates to this particular myth, it went over the myth again. So it was just a bit repetitive in that way. I really though did enjoy okay. <laughs> the parts that actually give you proper tips when it comes to going on a psychedelic journey. So set and setting, uh, ritual opening and closing, uh, things to do like fasting beforehand, to reduce the nausea and also the importance of integration post trip. And especially to with, with some people probably needing the help of a psychedelic facilitator, like, as in a, a therapist to unpack and go through what they've experienced. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. So definitely also gave me a lot of tips on how to, once again, be a better trip sitter or facilitator for others. So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was like a bit dense though, the, the writing style, something that I had to read over the course of a couple of days. I couldn't just sit and read it in one go, but I did definitely gain some knowledge from it. So that was an interesting read and that was everything for this week. Until next time, stay well, Star Child.